In this tutorial we're going to have a look at the Express Generator tool and how you can use it to make a skeleton project with a lot of the Express features already pre-configured. So in the last tutorial we set up a basic project and required Express as a dependency and you can do that if you want to set up a very minimal project or if you feel comfortable with loading in all of the different features of Express individually but there is a tool that exists, the Express Generator which will set up a bare bones express project for you and separate things like the views and the templates that you'll be using into separate directories and files. So to install the express generator at the command line simply type npm install dash g for global so that you can use it anywhere on your terminal express generator. And when that finishes installing you'll have a new command on your command line which is simply express. And if we have a look at the help documentation for that, you can see to use the express generator all we need to do is type the command express, pass in any options and then specify a directory where we want to install our new project. And the main option to choose is which templating engine you want to use when you're rendering pages. And we'll look at templating in a future lesson, but the templating engine I like to use is EJS, which is embedded JavaScript. So I'm going to create a new project selecting EJS as the templating engine. And you'll notice we have a new project on the left hand side in our file explorer. So let's take a look at the structure that the express generator has created. So you can see we've created a brand new node project with its own package.json. We've got a main app.js file and there are several folders that contain different parts of our project. So let's take a look at the package.json file first. And as you can see, it's very similar to a package.json file that will be created using an npm init command. And we've got one script which has been defined, which is start. And all that's doing is starting a HTTP server to enable us to view our project. And unsurprisingly, we've got Express and EJS defined as two of our dependencies. And some of the others should be self-explanatory, but the other dependencies are used to add functionality into our skeleton project. So let's have a quick look at our app.js file. And inside it, you can see we've got our dependencies being required, including Express and the path module from the core API, along with other things like the Morgan logging library. Underneath our dependencies, we've actually got two modules that have been required, but you'll notice from the relative paths that these are actually local files, not from our node modules. And these two modules actually define some routes, some URL paths for which our application will respond to. And we'll take a look at that in a second in the routes folder. But underneath those imports, as we did in the previous lesson, we're basically starting a new Express project. And then following on from that, there are lots of configuration options that are being passed in, including telling Express to use those routes that have been loaded in from the above modules. And we'll come back to a lot of this configuration in future lessons. And finally, at the bottom of the app.js file, there's some more configuration to tell Express how to handle errors. For example, when a route's not matched with a 404, or when there's been a complete error and we need to let the user know about that. So let's take a look at the contents of the views folder. And if we examine the index file, you can see we've got a HTML template with some special tags in, which form part of the embedded JavaScript. And you'll see how that works in just a second. But hopefully what this demonstrates to you is in our views folder, we can create HTML templates that can be applied to pages or routes within our project. And because it's a template, data can also be passed in to customize it. And the same can be said for the error template. It's just a few HTML tags that are populated with content from variables that are passed into the view. So how do we use these templates? How do we specify which routes, which URL paths are going to use them? And also how do we pass the variable data into each of those templates? Well, the answer lies within our routes folder. So as I mentioned, when we were looking at the app.js file, each of the files in the roots folder is actually a module, and you can see that from the module.exports on line nine. But you can see, as we did in the previous lesson, we're setting up a new route, a new URL path. But instead of just sending some text back this time, we're actually using the express render function to render the index.egs template that we looked at just a second ago. And you may have noticed as well that we're passing an object with a property of title that has a value of express, which is the data that's available within our EJS template. So there's only the one folder that we need to really look at, and that is the public folder. And as the name suggests, this holds all of the images, third-party JavaScript files, and also CSS files, 
that can be publicly used by our project. So before we finish let's actually fire up this project just to demonstrate how it looks and works. But before we do that we actually need to install the dependencies for the project with an npm install. And that's because the express generator tool does actually define all of the dependencies that we need but it doesn't actually install it. It leaves that for us to do by ourselves. But once the dependencies are installed we can run the script that's inside the package.json file. And now that's done, let's head over to the browser and check out our new Express project. So simply browse into localhost and a port of 3000, which is the default port that the Express Generator tool provides for us. We can see that our template is being loaded in, and the title, which is just being passed in as an Express from the root, is being rendered in our index.ejs template. And just to demonstrate the error template as well, if we try to navigate to a page that doesn't exist, we get the error message, the status code, and also the stack trace. So that's a quick overview of the Express Generator and the project skeleton that it creates. In the next lesson, we'll look at creating our own routes and applying templates to them.